morning. On behalf of the independent agents who represent State Auto in now over 35 states and our more than 2,000 associates, including over 700 of those here in Central OC, without a partnership that extended well beyond to three employees and a rented room at East Broad and Fifth Street. Nearly 90 years later, we remain a steadfast partner of the Columbus Chamber. Like you and the Chamber, State Auto values the Columbus region and its growth. Together, we offer strength and stability to our community. And together, we recognize the value of people who bring innovation and ideas to our region. State Auto's story is your story. It's one of progress and perseverance, one of struggles and one of success. Together, we are the story of Columbus. We are Columbus, and you are the Columbus story. So let's make it happen together. There's one other important success I need to state, and that is that the Columbus region is getting better known to business decision makers. Four years ago, the Chamber conducted a national poll of CEOs to determine if they knew of Columbus, and the results weren't good. Here to share the results of the Chamber's recent poll of national and local CEOs and to give his perspective as a global economic development professional is Andy Levine, President of Development Counselors International. Andy and his team work with our region to help tell the Columbus story to business leaders around the globe. Please join me in welcoming Andy to the stage. Thank you very much for the warm welcome. Um, as Tom mentioned, my name is Andy Levine. I'm president of Development Counselors International. Two L's in it. When my father started the company in 1960, he thought it'd be cool to use an English spelling, and I've been explaining that away for the last 20 or so years. But anyway, I'm here to talk to you about how corporate America views Columbus and how to take the region's profile even higher as you see in the screen here. So I'm going to share with you two surveys today. Hopefully I'll share with you two surveys if this comes up. There we go. The first survey, as Ty mentioned, is a perception of how Columbus is viewed by corporate America. It's a continuing survey of non-resident executives. And what's, um, if we can go back one. Um, thank you. Um, in 2005, the survey was conducted. We're now going to see the results in 2009. And there's an interesting comparison point. It was conducted by a local firm called Opinion Consultants. The second survey is a survey that my firm has done called Winning Strategies in Economic Development Marketing. Uh, we do this survey every three years. It's a survey of corporate executives with site selection responsibilities. And it sort of gets at what works in marketing and community. How are people's perceptions formed, and, uh, and how do they come to learn about a business climate? So I'll share with you little highlights of both of those. So the first question is, what does corporate America think of Columbus, and how does it compare to what the business community outside of Columbus thought of Columbus four years ago in 2005? And I'm going to share with you three different slides, three questions that we've heard from executives on here. Here is the first one. Um, when you hear Columbus, when you hear the words Columbus, Ohio, what comes to mind? And as you see on the left-hand column are the 2005 results, and then 2009 the results on the, in the right-hand column. Um, um, this is an open-ended question, so in categorizing the responses, as you see in 2005, 58% of the respondents did not have a clear image of Columbus. They said things like, no opinion, I don't know. Um, uh, blank slate is kind of what they were telling us. Now as we look four years later, that has gone down significantly to 39 percent. That's a, almost a 20 point drop, which is terrific. What comes up next in both surveys, Ohio State comes up very, very strongly. Your football team comes up very, very strongly. Uh, so that comes in really with about a third of the respondents each time coming in with that response. Beyond that is a neutral location description. Things like Midwest City, Heartland, State Capitol, those are the kinds of things that were mentioned in this. An interesting observation that I had in just looking at these results for the first time, you don't see t 
terribly many of your Fortune 500 companies, of which you have six, uh, you have a larger number of Fortune 1,000 companies showing up in this. I think that is an opportunity for you and an opportunity uh, for a public relations effort. Moving on to the second question that we have here. This is a really fascinating question to look at here. How would you rate the Columbus region as a site for doing business? And executives have five different responses they could list. They could say excellent, they could say good, fair, poor, or don't know. What you see in the green is what was said in 2005. What you see in the blue is what was shared in 2009. So let me start you off all the way over uh, to the left-hand side of that slide there. 51% um, in 2005 said don't know. That has come down significantly. It's come down to 38% in 2009. Now the key question is where did those people who now do know, where did they start falling? And the good news is they started falling in the excellent and the good category. In 2005, if you look at the other side of the screen, not a single person that we surveyed said Columbus had an excellent business climate. That has come up to 5% in the 2009 survey. Same thing in the good category. That has gone from 21% in, um, in 2005. It's gone up to 29% in, um, in 2009. We've done a lot of surveying for communities. This is very significant progress and significant upward movement you, you should feel very, very good about. The final question, this is sort of the, uh, the million dollar question uh, in this regard. Would you consider Columbus as a relocation or expansion location? Same sort of progress. In 2005, 23% said yes. That's come up significantly, 11 points to 34% in 2009. Very, very significant progress. So bottom line, as you're looking at this here, um, the needle is moving. Very, very powerful, clear evidence, clear proof points that Columbus's profile is rising. You are effectively telling your story. And so I'll step back, let you take a round of applause for yourselves in this regard. Um, really, really good news in that regard. So. Um, the second part of this question is, of course, how do you build on that momentum? How do you increase it and build it further? And here I'm going to turn to the winning strategies survey. And I'm just going to focus on one question that we have uh, that we've asked of executives. And once again, these are corporate executives with site selection responsibilities. And we asked the question, what are the three leading sources of information influencing your perception of an area's business climate? And we asked this of about 250 executives, and I'll share with you the results both for the most recent year, 2008, when we did this, as well as the historical data. Number one, dialogue with industry peers. So what an individual's colleague is saying about a community is very, very important in shaping impressions. Number two, articles in newspapers and magazines, the printed word. Number three, business travel, the impression a business traveler gets of the community when they are in that community. So those are at the top of the list. I want to also share with you though what's at the bottom of the list. If I click forward here, um, if you look at what scored below 10%, there's a couple of interesting observations. TV and radio, newscast shows, broadcast shows up much, much lower as you see here, about 7% the corporate executives that you're trying to reach, trying to influence, they rely much more heavily on the printed word. Print advertising, on the other hand, direct mail, TV and radio advertising shows up much, much lower in this regard. So if I just go back here and make an observation about what's at the top of the list, dialogue with industry peers,